Okay, so I'm here with Miho Noguchi, and I'm so excited to talk to Miho and learn lots for myself, and I'm sure we'll have learnings for everyone who's listening to the Sasuga podcast. So let's start with Miho. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Helen. Uh, my name is Miho, and I'm um, a professional bilingual event host MC for corporate events and sometimes for weddings. And I'm also a voiceover actor and also the Mrs. Uh, Japan Globe 2017. <laughs> I'm a beauty pageant queen. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. So the great voice, the great look, you've got it all. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> and I think I've also heard that um, some listeners might find your voice familiar from... Oh, the- yes. 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 I was the former voice lady uh-huh. the google maps app in japanese the gps function uh-huh yes do, wow. you, uh, do you want me to do it just a little bit yes. Yes. <laughs> do the voice okay higashi ni susumimasu mokutekichi shuhen desu otsukare sama deshita something like that <laughs> I, love it. I absolutely love it. I feel so happy because like, you know, I know you. I also know the lady who does the English announcements on the Shinkansen. So it's oh, like... Oh, yes! <laughs> yeah. uh, Donna Bark. Yes, yeah. I made a video um, with her, you know, with her picture. Uh-huh. And the other Japanese lady. Uh-huh. Like, you know, I, I introduced them, like, I did, a, like, a, you know, uh, I mimicked, you know, I made a video mimicking their announcements on the oh. Shikansen. So, <laughs> say hi to her, and uh, please tell, tell her that I made a video, and I said, yeah, she's got a very beautiful voice, mm-hmm. great voice. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All Small right. World. We'll definitely be in touch about this. I'll say, yeah, we're talking about you on the Possessing Podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So, um, I mean, there's so much I want to cover today. So let's start with the first question that I usually ask to the podcast guests, which is what sort of communicator do you want to be? Oh, wow. Mm. I, uh, well, I've, it's been my big goal and my agenda Mm -hmm. at all times to become a better speaker. (laughs) And by better speaker, I mean, somebody who can entice people and make them make them listen and pay attention and with also a lot with a lot of techniques like for example pronunciation or delivery skills or the volumes like Mm -hmm. you know like you mentioned in other um um video that you know you were featured helen Mm -hmm. and i totally agree Mm. with that and I want to incorporate every essence and method that I can get to be a better speaker mm. and if I can get paid for that that would be that, that's the number one reason I'm doing this <laughs> if I get paid <laughs> that's brilliant I mean so you are already a fantastic speaker we know that and it's great to hear that you're still looking at ways to continue to grow as a speaker. Mm-hmm. And yes. And of, of course, because I don't live in English speaking environment, mm-hmm. my speaking is very, very slow when it comes, especially when it comes to, to English, I, because I need to think and come up with, with the right words. Mm-hmm. So I have, I have a lot of, like, a, have set a, a long-term goal Mm. Uh, to be a better speaker in terms of speaking more fluently and I in my past experiences I've been enjoying communicating with people from other countries Mm -hmm. who are in Japan like who visits here Mm. and at corporate events they really love what what they experience Mm -hmm. at functions and I'm just happy to be part of it, part of their memory and part of their experience. Right. So, yeah, and that just brings to mind this thing of making an experience. So, uh, as you know, I Mm -hmm. come a lot of people um, in giving presentations. And presentations, it's not just about 
what you're saying, but it's it's how you make people feel as well. Right, exactly. From Maya Angelou, Angelou, she said, people will forget what you say, they'll forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's right. And they always, like uh, speaking coaches always say, you know, what matters is, it's not what you say, you know, the words that you say, but how you say it. Right. Yes. Like, so okay. even, even if you say something like a short phrase, like, I love you, it can mean like, I love you. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it doesn't mean that he or she loves you <laughs> at all. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I want to go a little bit in, into this topic more deeply because this, I'm so passionate about this, getting this message across to as many people in Japan as possible because so many people are obsessed with just getting the English right. Mm -hmm. that content, just getting the English right. And I keep saying it, that is a small part of it. The English is a small part of the communication. And what's really important is how you look and how mm -hmm. you Sound because as human beings we pay so much more attention to that and that's what then people that's how they feel mm -hmm. uh, as they respond to that so what would you say on on that well exactly is the noise okay because there's yeah. a construction going on sorry um i totally agree but because 90 97 percent no 93 percent Mm -hmm. of what we communicate try to get across mm -hmm. it depends on how you look and how you sound and the only the seven percent remaining seven percent counts for what is actually said mm -hmm. so it's it's proven by the science or whatever <laughs> and but people still like um people still won't don't look in their eyes when in the eyes of the the person that they are talking to, mm -hmm. especially the Japanese, because we have this culture of I think from the samurai era, mm -hmm. like we were we were not supposed to be looking into their, you know, the people in the higher rankings. Right. Yeah, yeah. and in some Asian countries too. Mm -hmm. So we have that issue to overcome so especially kids in school mm -hmm. who start their uh, learning of the english language when they're about like 10 or 13 11 13 mm -hmm. people like teachers don't teach those kind of things true. yes and so it is so important to teach them how to be a better communicator mm -hmm in the first place, rather than being a better speaker. Right. Yeah. So true. I love that. I'm, I'm mm. really wanting this message to get across to as many people as possible. Fantastic. I, and I love working with children, like teaching them and singing songs. And, and recently my hometown organized a, a English boot camp, like two day boot camp for Chugakse, the junior highs. Mm. And I was invited as a, like a guest speaker mm -hmm. and they did the, all the introductions, self introductions, and they know, they know a lot of words and their vocabulary is okay mm -hmm. as a beginner. Uh, but like when they speak, like they shake their bodies and, mm -hmm. uh, and they look down and their voice is so small that if you go to, for example, to another country, people mm -hmm. won't look, look at you. People won't listen to you. You got to speak up, I said. Yeah. So um, that kind of um, attitude continues on as they grow up. And because nobody really um, said that they should correct that. Mm -hmm. So that's when they start to encounter all of, a lot of communication issues, troubles yeah and but they don't know what the, what's wrong with them what's wrong with them right yeah True. because that kind of those things that are going on with the body the posture and like the looking down those kind of things um I, I i don't know if you've seen the ted talk by amy cuddy where she talks about the impact of body language i think i have i've been watching so many yeah. communication 
like related TED Talks. <laughs> it's an amazing talk, and I, 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 I recommend this to my clients, and I recommend this to um, podcast listeners. So it's Amy Cuddy, um, her TED Talk. And what she's saying is that we know that people um, kind of get messages or make judgments about you based on your body language, but the body language, it doesn't just affect other people, it affects us too. Mm. Uh, if you are, you know, if you have, I mean, people who are listening can't see this, but if you see like the video clip of this, because we're actually doing this through Zoom, um, if you have a kind of, you know, not strong um, body language, then that sends signals to your own brain so mm -hmm. you, you don't feel the confidence. But if you force yourself to have a more upright posture, to have your head straight up, to kind of open up your gestures and things like that, that sends signals of confidence to the brain. And so you, it makes you feel confident and then people see you and they're like, oh, she he looks confident. And then you start to feel more confident. I just love that. Oh, wow. Create that. Yes. Yes. Our, our brain is connected to all the muscles and the, and the, the posters. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I do, when I, before I go on the stage, I do this like a Superman type of pose. Yes. Like spread my legs apart and, you know, put my arms onto my waist and say, I'm good. Like I'm, I'm a badass. <laughs> I say, like, it's really American, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. what he really recommends. It's, um, it's so powerful because it actually, um, it, uh, it releases testosterone. Even mm -hmm, if exactly. <laughs> um, so you feel more powerful. So it's amazing. Yeah. So like clearly you have had a lot of successes in your life and I want to focus on communication. Can you share with us a communication success story? Communication I success stories. Um, I have quite a few. Well, the, probably the best. Um, it's not really an episode. Like it's not like a one-time experience, but uh, that is uh, that I've made so many friends all over the world. Ah. I am very easy going and um, I really love to speak to people mm -hmm. like, for example when a tourist is lost on the street I can't help uh, but ask him or her what's wrong or mm -hmm. where they want to go and one time oh in Gifu there mm -hmm. was a big typhoon like mm -hmm. we had you had you must had a, yeah. have had that in well, Tokyo like a couple of days ago yeah. yes <laughs> and this UK couple was stranded at Gifu station oh, wow. that's where I live and I fa we found them and they said that they needed to go to Kyoto but from the with the JR like the the local JR lines mm -hmm. they could not do that because of because of the typhoon and affecting the um, the railways Mm -hmm. And so we decided to give them a ride to um, the Shinkansen station, mm -hmm. which is pretty far from the JR, I mean, the, the local JR station. Yeah. And it turned out that the wife or um, the lady was the announcer of the BBC three radio three. <laughs> <Really? laughs> so a few years later, we went, we went to London uh -huh. and she gave us the whole tour of BBC. And we oh. saw the studio, the big studio that you can you know, see in the, on TV. And uh -huh. we went to, we went into one of the studios. And so that kind of thing can happen just by asking yeah. someone on the streets, what's wrong? Right. So right. I love that kind of, um, I don't know, like um, epiphany right. that happens. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. By I, taking small actions. Yeah. Just sort of kind of, it, it's for some people, some people might think of it as a step out of their comfort zone. I think mm. it's not so much for you because you're comfortable in doing that. Mm -hmm. but a lot of people just, you know, reaching out to someone, contacting someone, speaking to someone, 
and then the things it can lead to. It, it reminds me actually because the first time we were actually in touch with each other was you contact, contacted me by Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. right? That was the very first time. <laughs> However, I knew of you from um, Emiko Rasmussen's podcast, podcast and listened to you being interviewed on there. And also the other coincidence was one of my team members was suggesting who, who we could interview for the podcast. And she said, well, there's this amazing lady called Miho Noguchi. And I'm like, yeah, I, I'm in touch with her. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I tell someone else that we're interviewing, like, oh, great. I'm, I really want to listen to what Miho says. So like, it's so funny how there's all those connections. Yeah. And it turned out that she went to the same school as I did. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. So, okay, so that's a great lesson, I think, for everybody is just, you know, take that little step and, and speak to someone or contact someone because you never know. You really never know what it's going to never happen. know. Don't be afraid. Like, even if they speak to in, speak um, something different from English, like Arabics or German, that's okay. Yeah, yeah Spanish or uh, I was in Takayama. Have you been to Gifu before? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, so in Takayama, there are so many Europeans and Australians, somehow not so many Americans, maybe because of the time of the year. Mm -hmm. But it's like you're living in a different country, really. Uh, yeah. and, and so it's in such a golden opportunity for anybody who is in that kind of uh, um, environment where you can have easy access and, you know, get in touch with people who are from other, other countries. So if you are in, if you live in Tokyo, mm -hmm. you really don't have to go to an Aikaiwa school, really. <laughs> you can go into a pub and start speak, you know, talking to somebody yeah. and make friends and have yeah. fun. Yeah. Mm. And even when I'm on the stage, I try to speak to the crowd just like I'm speaking to one person. Yes. And I try to look from the, from the right to the left and to the middle mm -hmm. so that people won't feel left out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is another thing in, in, you know, coaching speakers is, you know, even when you've got like a really big audience and, and they say, oh, well, I can't, how can I make eye contact? You can do it though with, with um, a big group it's just focusing on someone and making sure you're not just all the time in the center or all the mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. sure you cover everyone and then it goes back to what we said earlier about feeling everybody feels better because they feel that they're being noticed and that and that you're speaking to them directly exactly i i remember this um episode that somebody said i don't remember the name of the the leader but she's a female leader of hp Okay. And she, she's a very, she's very um, well known as a, like a very good communicator because she makes everybody in the room feel that she's looking at you. Mm -hmm. I don't know how she does that, but you know, there, she, there's, mu there's must be a technique to do it. And I'm fascinated with that kind of things mm -hmm. that, I can make feel make people feel the same way. Yeah. Yeah. So better leaders are better communicators, definitely. But I have a question, Helen. Okay. So when it comes to leaders in Japan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you do you think they are good communicators? It depends on the person. <laughs> So I know some extremely good communicators and some that I really question and I kind of wonder how they got into the <laughs> And company leaders nowadays need to speak up, not in the auditorium, but to the camera. Yes. And maybe on their company uh, website. Yeah. And young people look, watch that and make their decisions if they want to apply for this company or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's so changing it. And this is, you know, so like presentation skills have become so um, just crucial mm -hmm. for 
leadership. And I'm seeing that in my business. I mean, it's, it's just going crazy with the number of requests that I'm getting recently for, for that sort of coaching for, you know, executive level. Good for you. Wow. <laughs> and I love it. I love to, you know, because I love to see the difference in people when usually when people come for presentation skills that clearly they're not comfortable and then, you know, we can work together and, uh, and it makes a big difference. And then I like to see that change. But also what's important to me is the change that happens from there. Um, so I was just coaching someone the other day. Um, and what I learned from the conversation was that just by coaching that one person, it was ultimately going to impact 600 people. Oh, yeah. Like, this is great. So, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's, that's re really rewarding as a coach. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Oh, wow. So it could be a set, it could be applied to, for example, teachers. Yes. Who can affect thousands of students yeah. and um, like politicians, maybe. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can just look. Uh, yeah, um, impact a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The listeners can't see, but uh, <laughs> Helen did a very, you know, very nice, funny look, you know, on her face. face. Politicians? Oh, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, hmm, there's, there's some room for improvement, shall we say, <laughs> in certain places. Um, let's, let's, moving on from politics, I want to go to the, you know, we've talked about your communication success, and clearly you've had a lot of that. Um, People often listening to the, the Sussega podcast when I'm interviewing people and they, oh, these amazing people, they didn't have any failures or, or struggles or nightmares. Uh, I'm guessing that you did. So what, what would be a story that you can share with us of something that didn't go well or? Uh, oh, I have failures like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have more failures than my successes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, th there are many, many episodes that I can share, but, um, the biggest one, hmm, recently I went to France to host an event for the Airbus company, mm -hmm. the airline company, mm -hmm. and they, they, um, delivered this new aircraft for JAL, Japan Airlines. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh my gosh, this, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed to share this, but I, I'm doing it anyway, because my friends all know that. Okay. And the rehearsal went okay. So I was the host. Yeah. And uh, I introduced everyone to, to come to the stage. And, and the rehearsal went okay, smoothly. But the, the very beginning of the, the, the real show, mm -hmm. the, my director came up to me and said, Miho, the Japanese ambassador i mean he's not the ambassador but uh you know somebody who works for the the embassy japanese embassy in paris mm -hmm. said that he's not uh he's making his speech either in french or in japanese can you translate that i said oh no i'm just i'm not going to embarrass myself by making mistakes um while it's aired on youtube Right. To, to the rest of the world mm -hmm. and said, I can't do it. Right. And that really jarred me. Like, um, I, I was very, very, um, f how do I say, uh, how do I say? Like, uh, I got really nervous. Uh -huh. And when I went to the stage, I made this, f I miss pronounce how do i say it's not a mispronouncing but uh i i said the the company of gel in the wrong name with the wrong name i said japan airways oh okay uh -huh. yes mm. and some people say ah japan airways japan airlines they're the same thing <laughs> but as an mc you can't screw right. up the name of the client and the guests that's the worst thing that can happen ever Right. So I was so upset afterwards uh -huh. and it took me so much time to come, come back in to my normal self and have, have my confidence back. Yeah. 
and、um, when you come when you go on the stage and speak to a lot of people, it's really nerve wracking. Yeah. Yes.、Mm -hmm. So even the rehearsal went okay. That thing can happen. Yeah. So、uh, in weddings, I've done a lot of things like that. I forgot to ask the father of the groom to speak at the very end of the wedding, and I try to let them <laughs> let them go and <laughs> open the door without、um, asking him to do that, even though he was totally prepared to do so. so Is it, what do you do? Do you、uh, just let it or sorry? What do you? Yes, I just let it. So 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 yeah. Well, I think in a situation like that, it can add a little bit of fun to the to the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but with that Japan Airways stuff, like I was totally unconscious of that mistake. Right. Okay. <laughs> So there was no way that I could say I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Sorry, I was so excited to be part of this, and just I blew it. 